Welcome to Westview, where life change happens. The story of the birth of Christ begins in Rome with a decree issued from the seat of worldly power for a census, setting into motion events leading to the birth of the Savior of the world in a town that represents the very opposite of worldly power, Bethlehem. In our upcoming Advent Sermon series entitled On the Way to Bethlehem, we will be providing insight into the geographical and historical significance of Rome, Jerusalem, Nazareth and Bethlehem, along with the important characters through whom the Christmas drama unfolds. Join us at Westview from the 1st to the 25th of December as you will be drawn into those places in a way that helps you experience the spiritual truths each location holds, preparing your heart and soul to encounter the wonder and awe of Christ. Westview's annual Christmas carol service will be taking place on Sunday, the 1st of December at 6 p.m. Bring your family members and friends as you join us on the lawn and outside area to listen to some classic Christmas carols in a relaxed environment. We will have Buddha Walsh rolls, hamburgers, cool drinks, water, popcorn and candy floss on sale from 5 p.m. You can either pay by cash or alternatively pay by card. The children's activities will also start at 5 p.m. So make sure to pitch up an hour early and participate in all that the afternoon has to offer. We hope to see you and your loved ones there. Here are some important events and dates to remember. The EWA would like to invite you to join them on Saturday, the 23rd of November at 9 a.m. to come and make some Christmas with them. Please see the notice board for more information and booking details. We hope to have you join us. The Lavender Ladies would like to invite you to participate in their break up back sale. This sale will run after both morning services today. We appreciate your ongoing support. We will be having fundraising sales for our upcoming December Holiday Club on Sunday, the 24th of November, as well as Sunday, the 8th of December, after both morning services. Your contributions will go directly towards enabling a child to meet with Christ. Your generosity is deeply appreciated and valued. Please follow us on our Facebook, TikTok and Instagram pages or visit our website at www.westview.org.za. But don't keep us a secret, share our content with your friends and family. Greetings friends and welcome to our worship service. We are in a two-week break uh, from a sermon series as we've just concluded Simon Peter flawed but faithful disciple and so between this this sunday and the next sunday we're going to be doing a standalone series as we await for the advent series and so today i would like to reflect uh, briefly around our call as disciples under the theme called to live as kingdom people and so as a way just to invite you to think about how you follow jesus i would like to read a brief quotation from one of uh, our leading theologians by the name of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He was a German theologian who did more work and wrote so much around the topic of discipleship. And so I would like to read a quote and invite you that as the quote comes on screen, just to spend some time thinking about the quotation and what it might mean for you. And so Bonhova says to us, your, your yes to God requires your no to all injustice, to all lies, to all oppression and violation of the weak and poor. If you can just allow those words uh, to sit with you for a moment, and then when you are ready, join us as we worship God together. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. It's time to 
Holy One, we come before you with hearts full of praise. You are the creator and the sustainer whose majesty fills the universe and whose love flows endlessly throughout it. You have called us to be, to be your kingdom people, reflecting your light and walking in your ways. We thank you for this sacred calling and for the strength of your spirit that sustains us. Yet we confess that we have not always lived as you desire. We have sought comfort apart from you, being selfish when we were called to be selfless and silent when we should have spoken. Drive us and cleanse us from our shortcomings so that we may be forgiven by you and even forgive ourselves. Renew our hearts today as we seek justice, love, mercy, and walk humbly with you. Guide our steps to reflect your kingdom in all that we do. In your holy name we pray. Amen. In our worship, we are called to respond in giving of ourselves. And so it is now time to do the offering. And this is a response to, to God's love to us in our sharing in this kingdom that he that is called the kingdom of God. And so let's respond to that 
as we give Westviews. Bank account details will be up on screen and you can choose to pause now and give or you can wait till the end of the service. It is your choice. Good day, Westview. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we gather today in this virtual space, thankful for the ability to connect and worship you together. We bring our gifts and offerings before you, not out of obligation, but with hearts full of gratitude for your abundant blessings. Though we may be apart physically, we are united in purpose and spirit. Use these gifts to extend your love, provide for those in need, and further your work in the world. Bless each contribution and guide us to be faithful stewards of all you have entrusted to us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello family of God, our reading today is taken from Mark chapter 1 verses 14 to 20. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God has come near, repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in the boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is God's word for us today. We give thanks to him. Amen. I would like to start by just asking you a simple question. Have you ever signed up for something and without really knowing what is it that you are signing up for? Uh, it could be one of those messages that come into our cell phones and you just click on the link and then you find yourself uh, having subscribed to something that will just continue to eat your airtime. It could be a life insurance or any type of insurance where you just sign up for something without really truly understanding the extent of your cover. Uh, I am one of those people who sometimes do that with some of the things. I want to suggest that in our journey as disciples of Christ, we sometimes also overlook the small print of what is it really that we are called to being as we accept the Christian faith. That when we say yes to God, we don't really understand, to use the words of Bunhova, we don't really understand that our yes to Jesus actually needs to be a no to something else. I believe that one such small print that we sometimes tend to overlook is the fact that as disciples and as followers of Christ, we are actually called to be custodians of the kingdom of God. And so as custodians of the kingdom of God, we are also called to live as the people of the kingdom of God. Note here that we are not only called to look forward to the kingdom of God, but to begin and again to borrow from the words of that wonderful Charles Wesley hymn, O for a Thousand Tongues. Somewhere there he invites us to anticipate heaven below and own that love is heaven. 
And so part of what we are called to do is not just to anticipate heaven as something that will come, but we are called to anticipate heaven below and to bring about the realization of the kingdom of God in this lifetime, regardless of the many challenges that we may experience. The heart and the truth of the gospel is that we are called to live as kingdom people. Now, earlier on in Mark's narrative, Jesus had left Galilee and had come to John for baptism. Now, in our reading, Mark tells us that after John's arrest, Jesus returned to Galilee. John's imprisonment was the result of his rebuke of Herod Antipas for marrying Herodias, who was his wife's brother. And so when Jesus came to Galilee, it was not a safer place for him to go because Herod Antipas had ruled Galilee. In fact, Luke tells us that some Pharisees warned Jesus at some point to flee Galilee because Herod intended to kill him. But in Mark's uh, reading that we have read, Jesus came to Galilee because it needed to hear the good news of the kingdom of God. So Jesus risked his life in order for him to come to Galilee or to go to Galilee to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. And this is how Jesus proclaims the good news of the kingdom of God. He says, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. And so, just briefly, three points for consideration from this text. The kingdom of God has come, repent, and believe the good news. The kingdom of God has come. Now, in the four centuries prior to Jesus, Jewish theology held that God no longer spoke through prophets and that prophecy had ceased with the last prophet Malachi. But it also taught that God would again act in the future in the messianic age. And that prophecy would resume once again. And so when Mark begins his gospel with the person ministry and the preaching of John the Baptist, he is in fact demonstrating that God had broken his silence by speaking through John, who was the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. But then God speaks in our reading through Jesus Christ as Jesus announces that the kingdom of God has come. This statement about the kingdom of God unveils God's plan for the world. This statement brings hope to the suffering and the rejected because the kingdom of God is about seeking that which is lost. It is about mending broken pieces and broken relationships. It is about moving from an individualistic approach to life to a more community-based approach. This community-centered approach is something that is both Christian and African. And so then, the hopes and expectations of the past will now become a reality because the kingdom of God has come. God, in other words, is about to bring final fulfillment to the promises that he had made in the past. But God needs a community made of people who are willing to repent from the sin of individualism and ignorance. People who are willing to repent from their own sins. And so Jesus says, not only has the kingdom of God come, but he also makes an invitation to those who hear his message to repent. You see, for Jesus and for those who took his message seriously, the kingdom of God was an alternative reality. Earthly kings and kingdoms were no longer the ultimate concern for those who received the message of the kingdom of God. What, matters, what mattered most for those who had agreed to follow Jesus was now the kingdom of God. This brings an invitation and a call to change behaviors as well as thinking patterns. 
those who are called to live as kingdom people will now have to repent or change the way they view their world. No longer will they view the world through the lenses of the world, but they will now view the world through the lenses of the kingdom of God. In other words, kingdom people cannot afford to live like the rest of the world. They need to be agents for transformation. They need to be people who are animated, people who believe in this alternative reality that God is not done with the world. That despite and in spite the injustices and the wars that we see, despite the brokenness and the poverty that we see, that God is not done with the world. And so people who understand that they are kingdom people, people who believe in this alternative reality that God continues to break through into our world and intervene to change lives, these are people who understand that their lives also will never uh, remain the same. Kingdom people are people who need to be uncomfortable but also concerned about the social injustices of their time. And so the kingdom is about people going out of their ways to express their love for neighbor. Kingdom people are people who find meaningful ways to express love and concern for neighbor. The coming of the kingdom represents a time of a radical shift from accepting things as they are because we are not personally affected. Then Jesus moves on to say, believe in the good news. Now, there were plenty of reasons why Galilee needed to hear the good news of God. At that time, we know that Caesar Augustus was being hailed as the good news for the world because it was Caesar who brought peace, unity to a divided Roman Empire. Now, nations under Rome were allowed under Caesar to conduct their national, cultural, as well as their religious life. As long as their leaders paid taxes to Rome and kept the peace in their territories. So accordingly, the various heralds in Palestine and the leaders of the Jewish Sanhedrin in Jerusalem had vested interest in cooperating with the Roman authorities. This undoubtedly diluted their ability to proclaim the good news as it became impossible to speak truth to power. Believing in the good news, in the good news is a call to personal decision and re reorientation of one's whole being. It means a radical change in one's mind, but also a radical change in one's heart. And so the old ways no longer have hold over one's life. In the words of the Apostle Paul, it is no longer I that lives, but it is Christ who lives in me. And so one's world of reality no longer consists of how to live under this or that political regime, under this or that economic condition, cultural forces, as well as social expectations. The proclamation of the kingdom of God was good news because it was a gospel to be believed. In spite of the fact that the circumstances of life in Galilee remained unchanged, the good news that Jesus proclaimed was that the kingdom of God can become a reality precisely in a world such as this, precisely in a world where there is division, precisely in a world where there is poverty, precisely in a world where people can find so many things to separate themselves from one another. Now, discipleship, which is this process of a lifelong commitment to follow Jesus, is not a second step in Christianity. You do not first become a believer in Jesus and then choose to become a disciple. Right from the beginning, 
discipleship is involved in what it means to be a Christian. Right from the beginning, we need to be followers of Jesus. We need to be people who believe in this reality of the kingdom of God. Now, there are many texts in which Jesus explains in greater detail and with other images what it really means to be his disciple. But the command to follow him is the first and the most basic explanation to what it means to be a disciple. And so we find this in a number of stories, especially in the calling of the disciples. In Matthew, we are told that Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee when he saw two brothers, Simon Peter and Andrew, and Jesus said to them, come follow me. At once they left their nets and followed him. He went a bit further and saw two more brothers, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. He called them in in a similar manner, and they too left their boat and followed him. The words follow me, or the words follow me, occur about 13 times in the Gospels, but there is also reference to one person or another who follows Jesus. This is an, this is an indication that following Jesus is a basic concept in the Gospels. The question then that we need to ask is what does it mean for you and I to follow Jesus? What does following Jesus really involve for us? Allow me to say that it simply means believing in the kingdom of God. It, is, it simply means believing that the kingdom of God has come in Jesus and then spending our lives striving for the realization of this kingdom in our own unique as well as in our own God-created ways. Now, I've always found this passage to be both inspiring but at the same time challenging. I find it inspiring because of the decisiveness and the immediacy of the response of the four disciples which are mentioned in today's reading. But I also find it a bit challenging because it seems to set the bar so high. Leave everything to follow a man into an unknown future. And so I wonder how many of us here would really be willing to leave everything behind and follow Jesus literally. Most of us, truth be told, would find it very hard to leave work and family and friends and all the rest to venture into such an uncertain and unknown future. So we need to ask ourselves then, because most of us would struggle to do that, does that mean that we are failures as Christians and as disciples? Or, at, or does that mean that we are less faithful than Andrew, Peter, James, and John? I suspect that we are meant to find in these stories about following Jesus, in these stories of disciples following Jesus, I think we are meant to find inspiration. We are meant to read these stories and be inspired. I doubt that Mark, as he wrote this gospel, imagined you and I following Jesus in quite the same way as these disciples who left everything and followed him. And so I think it is for us more about following Jesus in general than following him only by leaving everything to proclaim the coming kingdom of God. Except, of course, that we can never really follow Jesus in general. None of us can follow Jesus in general. All of us are invited when we say yes, the yes also uh, is a response to the invitation that invites us to follow Jesus in particular and distinct ways. You and I are invited to follow Jesus in particular and distinct ways, ways that may or may not be like the first disciples. Perhaps for some of us, 
we follow by becoming a school teacher. Perhaps for some of us, we follow by volunteering for community service or by volunteering for one of the ministries of the church and finding a place to serve. Perhaps for some of us, we follow by looking out for those in our churches who always seem to be on the outside and invite them in. Perhaps some of us follow by doing a job we love as best as we can in order to help others. Perhaps we follow by just being generous with our wealth as well as with our time. Perhaps we follow by listening to those around us and responding with encouragement and care. Perhaps we follow by caring for an aging parent or even a special needs child or someone who needs our attention and our care. And I think you get the picture now that there are a number of distinct ways that we can follow Jesus and we can follow him and follow him immediately in the here and now without leaving everything to follow him but we can find ways to follow him in the way our lives are structured we can follow Jesus you and I can follow Jesus in this world and in this time in which we live what seems to be at the heart of the gospel is that we can follow Jesus in all of these different situations and circumstances precisely by trying to imitate him, by trying to treat others with the same regard, love, and patience that Jesus did, including all manner of people, but especially those who were overlooked by society. This is what I think is at the heart of what it means to be a Christian. It means to try to live and to treat others as Jesus did, embracing the values of inclusiveness, love, forgiveness, and healing. This is what it means to live as kingdom people, simply striving for an alternative reality. May God bless us as we continue to find ways to express how our faithfulness as we follow Jesus Christ. Amen. As we draw to an end, as we reflect on what it means to be kingdom people, I would invite you this week to think about what it means to live as a person who belongs to the kingdom of God. In your sphere of influence, how can you bring about the kingdom in this place right now? Be strong. 
Lift up your hearts in love into his song. When your mistreated be certain to bless, seeking his righteousness. Now is the moment, the day of salvation. This is the hour to be serving the King. Bearing the gospel, go to the nations. Now is the time for And so, friends, I invite us to say the words of blessings together. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Friends, go into the world. Go with the peace and the love of God. Go into this coming week and anticipate times and places where God might be calling you to partner with God in bringing about the kingdom of God. Go and may God go with you. Amen. Mm -hmm.